I'll bring the wine, you bring the glasses. What a great time we'll have while the last us. I can't wait to toast with you, so call me a cat. Hi, I'm Joanne, and this is Call Me a Cab, a show about tasting wine without intimidation. Today on the show, I'll be tasting just a glass of wine and pairing it with food based on suggestions from the internet. If you're new to the show, welcome. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you've already subscribed, thank you so much and welcome back. Let's get started. Today on the show, we will be trying the 2018 Esteban Martin Garnacha Syrah from the Aragon region of Carnena, Carnena, Spain? I hope I'm pronouncing that even close to correctly. I do love Spanish wines though, or I think, I think I do. So far I've had a lot of luck with Spanish and Portuguese wines, most specifically the rosés. I don't know so much about the reds, but we shall see. This wine got a 92 point rating from James Suckling, who is a wine critic. I think he even has one of those master classes, which would be interesting. The thing I think about a point rating is that's his opinion and not that his opinion isn't valid as a wine critic, but I feel like you have to find that wine critic whose palate matches your own if you want to follow the point ratings. I think point ratings are great for people who are, I don't know what to get, and you see that high point rating and you're like, cool, well somebody who likes wine says this is good and so I'm going to get it. For me, I pretty much ignore that point rating, although I respect it. I think good for Esteban Martin that he got that rating, but I don't know enough about James Suckling's ratings to know if I'm lined up with him or not, but we shall see because he did like it. So we're going to give it a whirl and see what we think of it. Have a twist off. Okay, color wise, it's pretty dense. It's a ruby red, but if I get it right near the like edges, it's clear, but looking down through it, it's a little bit harder to see through. Pretty color, pretty straightforward ruby, just leaning a little towards the purple. Okay, smells like boots. Maybe that's leather, because I hear leather as a thing. Boots have a smell? <laughs> sure, oh my god, yeah, they have a smell. I mean, depending which kind of boot. It's like, is it a combat boot? Is it a cowboy boot? Let me check. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go like elegant boot. Like a, like a fancy Italian boot, is what I would say. Although, I should say Spanish. Yeah, no, it's definitely got like a, like a new leather smell. It smells like dehydrated cow. Well, and God, you know, I smell the things way before I smelled the fruits and the possible food smells, which the funny thing is, it's just grapes. So when I smell all the fruits, the cherries, the berries, the whatever, they're not in there. It's just grapes, but I smell the leather. Okay, so maybe leather in like a swimming pool. I'm gonna go with. Not bad though, everything smells new. It smells like a new pair of boots and a new pool raft. This is just like plastic, like fresh plastic, but less so than the leather. The leather was the but new leather, like a shoe that hasn't been broken in yet, which is nice. I would rather smell a shoe that no one's ever worn <laughs> over a shoe that's been worn in, but I'd rather wear the shoe that's been worn in, but by me, not by someone else. Gross. What okay. pairs well with leather? s and M. Let me give this a taste, <laughs> see where we line up. Okay, very lightly cherry. Got a little bit of a cherry tartness. It is a very mellow, red. It's got that mellowness of a pinot, super mellow, just a tiny little hint of like a cherry flavor and a, just a smidge of that like pepper. Just a smidge, a little smidge of something that just is a little bitey and it's a little smidge of cherry but not so tart that you can't take it. And I'm not talking maraschino cherries, I'm talking like real cherries. I don't know what the deal with maraschino says, I just know there's something off there. So I'm going to try it with the Spanish olive and the Spanish wine. They say what grows together goes together. So. Wish me luck. It's an olive, it's salty. I like these olives. I prefer these olives actually. These are what I would put in a martini or something like that. And sometimes when I'm at a bar, I like to buy a cocktail that has olives in it because I'm also a little hungry, but I don't want to get a meal. All right, let's see how that goes. Hmm. That made it a little bit more astringent. What does that mean? Like, oh God, how do I break down astringency? It's, it's different than tart, but it's along that same line that makes you go You know what? I liked it better before the olive. The olive tasted perfectly good. I'm gonna cleanse my palate real quick and go back in and try something else that's on my little charcuterie board, which I can't technically call it a charcuterie board because there's no meat on it, but I technically just did. Okay, let me see. I'm gonna go grape. Okay, so I just did a grape. It was a little bit of a tart grape, so let's see what that did to it. Okay, that brought it right back, honestly. So for me, if you like the more astringent thing, the olives and this. Let me try one of my weird little chips 
It's one of these mixed vegetable chips things. I'll try a plantain. All right, let's see what that tastes like. Mmm, salty, crunchy. I love me a chip, so that's delicious. Let's see what this does. Nope, we're back in astringency land. So salt and this, I think, are maybe not for me. But the grape was good. The grape was a little bit tart and a little bit of the sweetness. It's not a super sweet grape, but yeah, I'm gonna do another grape. Have another sip of wine, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. I can't wait to toast with you, so call me a cab.